Hello everyone, my name is Gary Nelson and I'm the Cornell Local Roads Program Instructor for the Asphalt Paving Principles and Pavement Maintenance Workshops. Given the situation this year, we've come up with a way to bring the workshops directly to you. We've taken individual chapters from the workshop manuals and kind of distilled and slimmed them down a bit to a few fundamental concepts that we feel are worth sharing. Then we produce 10 to 15 minute videos highlighting the core concepts. Today, we're gonna to talk about crack repair basics. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, crack repair basics, Cornell Local Rose Program. Here's an overview of what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna discuss sealing versus filling. Then we're gonna talk about materials, sealers versus fillers. We're gonna look at some operations and techniques, look at a two and a half minute video, and then look at some decision makes before coming to a little summary. Crack sealing. We're talking about working cracks here, cracks that are moving. And you can watch those over a period of time to determine if they are moving. The goal is to prevent the intrusion of water and debris. Crack filling, we're talking about non-working cracks. The goal is to reduce the infiltration of water and reinforce the adjacent pavement. As far as types of cracks, in our, um, in our workshop, we have a chapter um, talking about the stresses. We talk about the types of crack, the length. We're not going to do that today we will view a few. So for sealing, we're thinking transverse and reflective cracks, filling, perhaps block cracks in a parking lot, some alligator cracking and longitudinal cracking. Here's an example of um, transverse or reflective cracking. You can see, you've all seen this pattern. And this is clearly an overlay. It, it's, it's been there a few years for sure. And it's maintained, it's maintained uh, fairly well. The transverse reflective cracks have been sealed or filled, and so have the longitudinal cracks. Now here's a, here's a roadway that, that has not had maintenance. Um, you can see the center line construction crack, very common. And here's an example where a, a filler can be used. As far as the type of materials, for filling, we're basically talking about asphalts and emulsions. You can see asphalt emulsion, polymer modified emulsion, asphalt cement, fiberized asphalt. Whereas for sealing, we're throwing rubber and silicon into the mix. Asphalt rubber, rubberized asphalt, low modulus rubberized asphalt, and self-leveling silicon. An analogy, and it's not a perfect analogy, but I kind of liken sealing to caulking where you put a flexible material in because it can cover up some movement, whereas filling might be like a heavy duty paint, which of course is a little stiffer. Specifications can get a bit burdensome, so we'll try to um, slim this down a bit. Filling, you can see the ASTM designations, and sealing, um, primarily ASTM 6690, some of the older folks may remember um, 1190 and 3405, which it replaced maybe 15 years ago. Um, DOT OGS bid, group 31555 for a sealer bids out type two, uh, ASTM 6690 type two. And there are some differences. Um, type two, I'm gonna show you an example here of type two and type three right now. Type two, you can see it here. I'm gonna move the blocks and you can see that there is some movement, okay? Type three on the other hand, and it specifically says in the brochure to use in cooler climates and not necessarily say in parking lots in warmer, and you can see it's much more flexible, okay? So even within the sealer category, there are differences. 
Um, and there are certainly differences between sealers and fillers. So let's get back to the program. Okay. As far as the operations, here's the typical steps, cutting, which is optional, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Cleaning and drying, very critical. Installing the material, choosing the type of configuration you're going to use, and perhaps blotting if you so desire at the end. There's a router. Uh, that's one way to cut it. Um, common way, you can see portable machine here on the left. And here's the business end. This is an asphalt router. And you can route half inch, um, three quarter inch, an inch, depending on the circumstances and the blaze that you have. And you're going to want to clean out the crack, blowers, heat lamps. Uh, heat lances are very commonly used. They're a very good, good tool to use. And as far as configurations, we're going to look at flush fill, overbanding, and reservoir. The reservoir is after routing. In this particular case, they did flush fill it. Here's an overband, and there are circumstances where, where you may want to do that, and you can do that. And then flush fill is where you bring the product up basically to the surface of the pavement. There is an example of overbanding. This is a commercial, commercially made squeegee. It's got kind of a U shape. I've seen homemade ones, some in a V, some in a broader U. And here they're doing a job of just getting it over, not leaving too thick of a band in place. And here's flush filling. They're taking the wand and they're just filling the crack. In this case, it does not look cut. They're taking the crack and just bringing it up flush with the surface. Okay, so let's stop here and take a look at the video. Okay. Here we go. You can see they're working on rather rural road, various types of cracks, and here they are cutting. In this particular case, they're using a, a one inch by one inch router. And he's gonna get out there starting, gonna get ahead of the rest of the crew. You can see the machine's been used a bit, and that's a good thing. If you have it, you might as well use it. And there's the, there he is. Again, he's getting a head start, and you can see quite a bit of dust and debris are created. There's a close-up look. We'll get another close-up look at that. And that needs to be all cleaned out. Here they come first with kind of, I would call it an industrial-grade uh, blower for sure. Doing a good job of blowing the crack clean. You can see he's following right behind. There it is when blown. And these guys are using a heat lance also. That'll also blow it and it'll heat it quite hot. It'll heat it. There he goes up close. And you can see following behind him back there is the man filling or sealing the cracks. This particular case, he's starting out with flush fill. This crew looks well practiced to me. They seem to have a good rhythm going. There he goes with the wand. Bringing the wand through the reservoir, bringing the product again up near the surface. And there's the whole full crew in operation moving down the road. Again, this looks to me like a well-practiced crew. Here they're going to do overbanding, a one-man operation with the pour bucket. They put a little shoe on the bottom of the pour bucket. You'll see it in a moment. There he goes slowly along. 
There's the overband. And there's a little shoe at the bottom showing how the overband goes. Okay. Let's get back to the um, get back to the slides. Okay. Some questions. We're going to ask some questions on whether uh, whether to seal or fill. And that's the first question we're going to ask. Cost sealers, yes, they're more expensive. They'll last longer. Um, but then question yourself, is the crack moving? As we discussed, reflective or transverse, you're going to want a sealer. Uh, little or mo no movement, block or longitudinal. So depending on your circumstances and situation, it may make a difference whether you seal or fill and the type of cracks, obviously. As far as cutting, take a look at this. Take a look at the integrity of the mat on the left side here and the edges. To me, uh, the integrity does not look good. So if you have, if you have a router, you know, if, if, you have, if you have the opportunity, you're gonna wanna cut this if you can. If not, here's a situation where maybe overbanding would work where you cross over and you kind of hold those little rough edges in place. On the right here, and this crack has been here a while, that's, that's obvious, but the integrity of the mat looks better to me and the edges are just rounded a bit. So if that's cleaned out, I, I would say you could get away with a flush fill there and, and not, not needing to cut it. Another question as far as the configuration is concerned, where are you? If you're over here, and we have a lot of that in New York, especially upstate, um, and you have a very thick overband, uh, you run the risk of the plow pulling it right out of the crack. Whereas on the right here, and this is the Big Sur in California, I seriously doubt that a snow plow has ever seen that road. So you can, you know, you could overband there certainly. Okay, quick summary. Sealing for working and moving cracks. Sealing and filling materials are different, as we discussed. To cut or not to cut. Uh, game day decision on what you have on your road. Clean and dry, clearly uh, mandatory on, in all operations. And choose the configuration based on your particular circumstances, the cracks themselves, and maybe where you're located. So thank you very much. That's today's uh, Crack Repair Basics.